the space to move. Give him the space to move. So the instruments will keep playing for a second. Um, sing, cry out to God. Let God know what your need is. God already knows your needs. He just wants you to have the confidence and the trust that you can take your needs to him and that he will do something. That he is going to change it. So whatever you need to do, whether that's sing out, cry out, pray to yourself, move to the altar, do whatever you have to do this morning to run to God. He just wants to see that willingness. He wants to see that you believe and that you trust and that you can. So we're going to give God the space.
Father, we're just reminded again that with you all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. And so as we worship you, Lord, we, re re we reject any thoughts that would limit you. We repel any thoughts that would try to conform your future, uh, what you want to do in our lives, the things that you want to accomplish in this ministry by limitations that are around us, feelings that seem to intimidate us. And so, Lord, we just thank you that as we come into your presence, the God of miracles, that you, you enlarge our faith, you, you stir our thoughts, we, you, you, God, in, invade even our vocabulary, and we talk different. We proclaim the will of the Lord in this day, and we, we are able to lift up a standard against the evil that seems to be rising around us. Lord, we still bring hope to the world and we still are able to, to do the things that Jesus did in proclaiming your will in this day. And so we expect the God of miracles to move. God, move through us. Lord, in one sense, anything you do is a miracle. And we are, we're thankful that you are a God that is constantly moving, constantly working, constantly saving, healing, delivering, and bringing hope and restoration to people's lives. So we thank you, Lord. And your word is going forth and it is not returning void. It is accomplishing what it is sent to do. It's prospering in people's lives and revealing the kingdom of God, the authority of your lordship over our lives in this day. And we thank you that we can declare Jesus is our Lord. Lord, we now pause and we pray over our nation. We pray, Father God, for this country, this nation, Lord, that your will would be accomplished here, that your will would be revealed that the plans of the adversary would be exposed and revealed, that, that the plans of evil men would be exposed and that the will of God would take place. Lord, while we are here, we ask for the righteous to be in rule, to be able to exercise um, justice and authority, dear God, that would be in line with your laws and your, and your will. And so we just pray for our nation, Lord, that it would be one nation under God, that your, your authority would be seen and your will would be accomplished here in Jesus' name. So we just thank you, Father God, for peace in our lives, in our neighborhoods. Wherever we are, we are a preserving power of the peace of God. And we release that peace in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for your blessings over this service today. God, you bring a word to us that prepares us, not just one that is going to speak to our present situation, but you're a God that prepares us for that which is to come. So teach us those things that we don't know and prepare us for those things you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before you're seated, if you're close enough, turn to someone and just tell them, it's not going to be easy, but you can do it. It's not, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, but you can do it. The importance of encouraging one another in this day, and we come together to be an encouragement and to strengthen one another. A couple quick announcements before we get to the word today. Um, don't forget, next week, it's going to be really confusing for first service people. Um, next week is uh, one service um, during second service, so one service at 10.30 next week. Um, and so we're excited about water baptism and having communion together as a family. But it's also daylight savings time, and so we also turn our calendars, our calendars, turn our, our what, wouldn't that be, no, I don't want to turn our calendars back, no, um, but we turn our clocks back one hour, so you're going to go back one hour, but you're still going to come here um, uh, an hour and a half later, so you're going to be all fired up for worship, I tell you, you're probably running, sit, sit on the aisles, because I'm sure you'll be so hyped up and excited um, as we come together next week, so please, uh, um, be prepared for that. Um, those that are being water baptized will get a letter in the mail and um, have some explanations along with that uh, procedure-wise also, but we're just excited to see um, especially um, some of our young sh children that have made a commitment to the Lord and want to make a public declaration of their faith. And so it's so excited and we're believing this is going to be a supernatural event, um, not just a religious ritual. And so it's going to be great to come together and experience what God's doing. And so... Um, Next Sunday, one service. Be here at Daylight Savings Time. Don't forget that. And then also, this Wednesday night will be JAM. That's uh, first through sixth grade. We'll be meeting on Wednesday night. And so uh, we're doing the every other Wednesday night right now with JAM and CORE. Uh, one great, exciting testimony for us to be thrilled about um, is last Wednesday night, one of our youth accepted Jesus as their Savior. And so we're just so excited, um, thankful. 
um, that not only did uh, we do successful youth ministry last Wednesday night, uh, we had about 20 over there to be able to minister to, but um, the real success is when we see uh, those young people come to the Lord. Remember, our, our, kind of our, our, our motto is that we want to reach them before we have to rescue them. And so um, it's just exciting to be able to see what God's continue to pray for ministry on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings um, as we're doing our best in this season to be able to still reach out to our youth and our children and minister to them effectively. And so they, they don't have a long period of time without godly influence um, uh, in their lives. And so please uh, be praying along the line there too on Wednesday night. So thankful for that. A couple weeks ago, we had a lady in service uh, on Sunday morning that was born again. Uh, so this is a move. Amen. And we're going to keep moving. I had someone share um, this morning uh, before service that um, they have someone that, that doesn't even come to church here that's inviting people and telling them they need to come to Grandview. Well, if they're doing that, we ought to be doing that. Amen. Um, and coming together, getting excited. I had someone else sharing they're uh, uh, driving a, a school bus and they've just been praying over that school bus and exercising spiritual um, a blessing and authority in those positions, and it's gone from fist fights to, to sharing with them um, the good news of Jesus Christ in, in positive ways. The kids are asking, and so wherever you are, God has put you there to use you, to prepare those that are, are around you. And as your pastor, one of the one of the the, the weights I feel is is not just to comfort you when you're in your times of difficulty, but constantly to be preparing you for what God has for you. And today's message, I really sense, is one of those that is to not just um, encourage you, not just to, to pump you up, not just to give you a nice message, but I believe that as we go forward that there are difficult days ahead for us. I believe there are difficult days ahead in it, as we are moving into the last days. But folks, if God's put us here during this time, then we need to be prepared for whatever is ahead and that he will equip us, and he will prepare us. And here's the good news, here's the good news, here, here's, here is the answer to it all, the Lord is with us. Amen? Can I get a smile on that one? The Lord is with us. Turn to your, someone close to him if you need to, do a little shout today, and just tell him, the Lord is with you, the Lord, the Lord is with you. Think of the stirring that that puts on the inside of us, the way that changes our perspective in life, the way that as we look forward that we don't lose the Lord as we go forward, but that whatever we encounter, we have the God that is with us who already knows what the future is so that he's going to prepare us and equip us so that when we get to the struggles, the obstacles, and the battles ahead, that we are already going to be prepared to overcome every single time in Christ Jesus so that we can be uh, the example that he needs us to be. But also, as the songs we've been singing this morning, there's still people that need to be liberated. There's still people that need to be saved. There's people, people that still need to know about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to do that, folks, it's going to take courage. There was a great sounding of applause. It's going to take courage. Courage that I want to talk about today is courage that's a gift from God in our life. Oftentimes we, we look at courage as more of a natural thing and a, an emotional stirring on the inside. Too often we, we talk about being courageous oftentimes and it's a natural perspective. Courage being more of an emotional thing uh, that we're just self-determined that we're going to push on past the fear in life. We go and we take now quotes from natural individuals that may or not be even saved, and we have things like, like, well, all dreams can come true if you have the courage to pursue them, or courage is, is, is doing what you're afraid to do. There is no courage unless you're scared. And, and those are natural things, and I want you to know that there's nothing wrong with having natural courage, but you're not natural, you're supernatural. We don't have a natural God, we have a supernatural God. And I want to stir on the inside of us today a witness, a revelation, an understanding that the courage that we have to be able to pursue God in our life, to be able to confront the obstacles and even the, the right down demonic attacks that will come against us, that we have a gift from God, a divine courage, a blessing that comes from Him that we can stir and draw from on the inside of us a supernatural courage as we follow him to overcome every obstacle in life, 
that our courage is not based on our ability to just not show the fear that's on the inside of us, but the courage that says, I am not afraid, and have a, a boldness that stirs deep within us, boldness that comes from the Holy Spirit, courage from the Lord that we need in this day. Has anybody sensed the oppression that is coming against us? Has anybody sensed the obstacles that are being put in place strategically to try to stop the church, to hinder the work of the Lord Jesus Christ? And if we are just in the natural realm, we'll be discouraged. But when we understand what God has blessed us with in the spiritual realm, we can look at every one of those obstacles, whether it's in our family, whether it's in our neighborhood, whether it's in our nation, or whether it's in the spiritual realm, and we can be courageous in the Lord to go forward. Courage from the Lord is needed in our day. Again, this is not a pep talk. This is who we are in Christ talk. This is not just you can do it. This is the Lord is with you and all things are possible with you in your life as the Lord works through you. The Holy Spirit is not present with you to be a life coach. He is present with you to empower you with resurrection power to give you the courage and the boldness to go forward in your life. The gathering of the believers, what we're doing right now is not an emotional pep talk just to be able to tell you to get out there and try harder tomorrow to do better. But the gathering together of the saints is a time of spiritual transformation that breaks off the limits of the flesh, that transforms our thinking so we are not limited with our feelings or our abilities or what has happened in the past, but we get a word from God to encourage us of all things are possible as we pursue the Lord in our life that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Our divine courage starts to come on the inside of us. You see, the Word of God, the Bible, the Bible, and this is the foundation for our lives. It doesn't matter who says something is legal or acceptable, the Bible is the final authority in life. And the Bible, the Word of God, is not a book of positive quotes. It is not just positive thinking. The Word of God reveals the power and the authority that Almighty God wants to release in our lives as individuals so that in this life we can have the courage to overcome everything that comes against us. Again, you might say, Pastor, why do I need to hear all of this? Because of the days that are ahead. Because of the, the life that we need to be ready to live, the foundation that needs to be in place. Now, if you want to, you can jump back into the Old Testament. In a few moments, we're gonna look at Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter one, a very familiar portion of scripture. We know about Joshua as he gets ready to go into the promised land. You know that he'd been there 40 years earlier, him and Caleb and the other spies that had gone in. Uh, 10 of the spies said that we, they weren't able to take the land, but Joshua and Caleb, remember, they said they were of a different spirit. And that's what we are able to go up and take the, to the land. God is with us. We're able to do it. So if you want to look at Joshua chapter 1, stick your finger there. We'll, we'll get there in a few moments. Before we get there, there's a few scriptures in the New Testament that I want to make sure that we lay a, a New Testament, a New Covenant foundation with. So if you want to write these verses down, um, you can. Um, you won't have the time maybe to look them all up per se. But I really want to encourage you to be stirred up to receive the courage that God has for you in this life. Because every single believer needs divine courage in their life. Why is that? Number one, because every single believer is going to be confronted with a supernatural enemy called Satan. And he will scare the socks off of you if you don't have divine courage in your life. We could tell story after story of how the adversary whether it be demonic attacks or whether it be seemingly the enemy himself would stand with his oppression of evil to come against us. And we need the courage of the Lord to stir deep on the inside of us. We're not trying to uh, make a, a demonic attack something that, that is uh, um, exciting to talk about. We're just saying we need to be ready so that we stand against the enemy. We need to have divine courage because we're going to have to do what Jesus did. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. 
We need to have courage to lay hands on the sick when they're sick, not after they're healed. We need to be ready to stand and speak to the dead and to call them back to life again. We need to be ready to preach the gospel to the crowd that is uh, aggressive and oppressive against those that would stand up for the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. As we said last week, our time for being just silent uh, witnesses is over. We have to be courageous followers of Christ in this day. The time is being compressed and we do not have the luxury of waiting for a more convenient time. We have to seize every opportunity that we have. And courage is needed in our lives to be able to do that. Not just a Bible story that's in the Old Testament. Sometimes we look at these and we think, well, that was just a nice story. Paul said all of these things were written for an example for us. There's a, there's a nugget of truth that is there. Now, we don't go back and just try to repeat the Old Testament because we live under a new covenant, a better covenant, amen? A better covenant but we can learn from the examples of the Old Testament. And we can learn from Joshua when he was ready to go back into the Promised Land. This time God had given him the permission and the people were ready to go with him. And they were gonna go and it wasn't gonna be an, e an easy walk. It, it, you know, uh, it was funny, a couple of uh, a while back someone gave the church a, a self-propelled, four-wheel drive actually, kind of self-propelled push lawnmower. I mean, it's an amazing thing. You just kind of pick your feet up and, 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 and it kind of like it takes you on a, on a walk almost. You know, it's just, it's a great thing to be able to, to just grab a hold of that thing and just walk along. Folks, I want you to know that what Joshua and the children of Israel, God's people, were about to encounter was not going to be an easy walk. There was obstacles there that they have never faced before. There was, uh, there was uh, uh, fortified cities there was, uh, the enemy was deeply entrenched and ready to stand against them in, 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 in innumerable ways. And yet they were going to have the courage to go forward. I want to mention, make sure you understand that when we go back to Joshua and look at him, it was not just Joshua having courage. The people needed to be courageous with him. And it's not just having in this day and age a courageous pastor. It's not just having a charismatic leader. It's not just having someone that knows how to connect a few people to get things done. Every single member in the body of Christ needs to have the courage of the Lord alive in their life daily as we go forward because every day is going to be a new day. We're going to have to face the enemy all the way. And that's not to discourage us. That's just to say we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. That's just a reminder of who we are and what we're going to be in life. Now Joshua in the Old Testament he was a great leader. He was going to take them into the promised land. He was going to face opposition, struggles, seemingly impossible odds against him. They were going to need supernatural courage to continue to go from battle to battle, from fight to fight. So I wonder, in the New Testament, in the New Testament, do we need to have this kind of courage? In the New Testament, did Jesus teach his followers to prepare them to live a courageous life or just show up at church on Sunday morning? And do we need to have the courage of the Lord on the inside of us to be able to live the way Jesus calls us to live? Well, you remember the one scripture that we've looked at several times over the last couple of months, and you can just write it down, or many of you can quote it, but John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said this, red letters in my Bible said this, I tell you the truth, Anyone, ever, say anyone. Anyone means me. Oh, come on, let's do that one again. Anyone means me. That's right. So we're not just talking about the 12 apostles. We're not just talking about the early church here. Jesus himself says, anyone who believes in me will do the works that I do and even greater works because I am going into the Father. Jesus himself said, you're going to do the greater works you're going to be doing the works that I did and greater in number and in extent than I did. We're going to do the works of Jesus. You're going to need supernatural courage to do the works that Jesus did. You're going to need the supernatural courage when demonic forces stand against you to deny you and defy you. You're going to need supernatural courage when those that have incurable diseases stand before you and say, pray for me, I want to be healed. You're going to need supernatural courage 
when you have a, 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 someone who, who calls you to, to pray for their family member, and by the time you get there, they're deceased, and you go and you call them up from the dead, and they're raised from the dead. That takes supernatural courage. Well, pastor, I thought that was faith. Well, a faith and courage work so hand in hand as we go forward. If you've got faith, your courage wants to release that faith. And courage is there to be able to say, I believe, therefore I'm going to speak it out of my mouth and my life is going to walk in, in, in accordance with it. We're going to be, the, the be like Jesus, to have the courage in this day and age to be like Jesus is more than just saying no to sin. It is going forward and conquering the effects of sin on humanity. And when we do that, you are coming face to face toe-to-toe -to -toe with the kingdom of darkness, and we must be courageous and continue to follow after. I wonder if, if the early church leaders prepared the followers of Jesus after his resurrection to be spiritually courageous, or were they just to just kind of hold on until Jesus came, or were they just supposed to allow the apostles to be courageous? Folks, it's wonderful when we have a few spiritual leaders and we want them to be courageous. It's great when we have a pastor that's courageous or a spiritual leader that's courageous. But folks, I want you to know that every single one of us has the same spirit of God living on the inside of us. And that spirit is courageous. That spirit is bold. That spirit is ready to be able to follow after Christ. Notice just a few of these scriptures that the early church was instructed with. In 2 Corinthians 2, uh, 14, the Apostle Paul says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. Always leads us in triumph. Christ wants you to be triumphant. God wants you to be triumphant. And so you're going to have to understand if we're going to be triumphant, there's going to be some things that we're going to have to triumph over in our lives. And I, I'm, please don't misunderstand this. I understand that there are areas in our spiritual life that we need to get over it. We need to triumph over. Maybe it's a sin that is controlling your life. Maybe there's a habit that's controlling your life. Maybe there is a sin that has controlled your family for generations, and you need to get over that and get free from that in your life. But church, if we're spending all of our time just as individuals trying to get set free, who's out there getting the world set free? If we're spending our whole time trying to get free from a generational curse, who's out there reaching the next generation? It's time for us to say, I'm going to say no to this thing. I defeat it in Jesus' name. I have the courage to confront it. I have the courage to confront my daddy's demons, and I will overcome them in my life because God has a purpose for me, and I'm not going to just sit here and deal with me. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I've got the, the courage to live the rest of my life like Jesus is living through me. Paul writing to the church here. Paul writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit, I like this translation, a spirit of tim timidity or cowardness or fear. God has not given you a spirit of intimidation. God has not given you a spirit of intimidation. And when anything or anyone tries to come in and control you by intimidation, you need to say, Holy Spirit, I stir up that courage of God on the inside of me. I am not going to be rebellious, I'm not going to be arrogant, and I'm not going to be proud, but I am a child of Almighty God, and I have dwelled on the inside of me the Spirit of God, and I will not allow anything to intimidate me. I will not allow my past to intimidate me. I will not allow my past failures to intimidate me. I will not allow those that are around me that may be even smarter than me to, to allow them to intimidate me because I have the mind of Christ. Huh? Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have to study if you're in school. That doesn't mean you don't have to go to work if you're an adult. It just means that we need to make sure that we are, according to, to 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, cowardness. Anything that comes against you that makes you cower, that makes you shrink back, that tries to intimidate you, that's where you need to say, no, I have courage in the Lord to be able to face this thing. The Lord is with me. Now, there's the secret of everything that we get from God is, in a, is to remember that God is with us. The moment 
we lose an awareness of the presence of God, we lose an awareness of the power of the promises of God in our life because we start to doubt, would God do that for me? Could God do that in my life? Would God do something like that for me? And I want you to know that God will do it in you and through you because it's his promises that he has given to every single one of us in life. So God's not given us a spirit of timidity, cowardness. James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from who? You, each one of us. We resist the devil. Who resists the devil? We do. I do. You do. Resist the devil. If you don't resist the devil, if you don't resist the devil, there is no restraining force on him. You, or we could corporately say the church, is the restraining force of the kingdom of darkness in this world right now. And if we do not restrain the enemy, then he has no limits put on him in this world. So we must restrain him. We must resist him. Therefore, we have to have the courage to be able to control that evil one in our life. Quickly, in, in, in 1, Peter, 1 Peter 5, 8, 9, says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. Every single one of us have an enemy. Every single one of us have an adversary. And he is spiritual in nature. The enemy is spiritual in nature. The adversary, Satan, the devil, walks about as a roaring light, seeking whom he may, re, may consume or devour. Verse 9, it says, resist him steadfast in the faith. Again, to do these things, we have to have the courage on the inside of us, not just a pep talk, not just a coach, not, not just some positive uh, uh, quotes that we can throw at it, not just uh, uh, don't be afraid, push past this being scared, but a, a surge of the presence of God that comes upon us in, in an awareness that the Lord is with me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And the moment that I sense that spirit of intimidation, that, 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 that plan of the adversary that tried to, through manipulation of people or even thoughts that he would bring into my mind that would try to cause me to cower, to try to contain me, I need to resist them with great courage and say, no, the Lord has made me more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. So in our day, folks, in this day, we must be courageous followers of Christ. In this day, when evil is being called good and good is called evil, in this day, when there is so much oppression and opposition, spiritual opposition, uh, uh, even legally opposition against the church, we must have the courage to be able to follow after him and stir up that divine courage in our life. There's three points of courage that we can see Joshua had and that we can, as individuals, have, need to have in our life. We need to have, have courage to trust God. Courage to trust God. We say it, but do we really believe that we trust the Lord? We say it, we've got it going through our heads oftentimes, but do we really have the courage to trust in the Lord, to trust in Him to deliver us? Do we have the courage to trust God that tomorrow, whatever the plans of the enemy is, that whatever people might have against us, that God has a way to get us through it and to be victorious? You know, when Joshua was getting ready to go into the promised land, he, that God sent them to one of the most fortified, the most difficult cities, one of the most, uh, mo the, the most difficult and, and strongholds of that area. You know, naturally speaking, you would have thought God would have sent them over to some little village that just had a couple sticks around their, their houses to protect them. Maybe just a couple of Benny hens out there that would try to keep them to, to let them know when the enemy's coming along. But God didn't, didn't give them, you know, a, a little thing to overcome and build up their encouragement and faith and then take them to another village, you know, where maybe it was a little bit stronger, but they were still able to go in there and take it over. No, God sent them to the worst place to start because he wanted them to see that if you'll have the courage to trust me, I have a supernatural way to bring deliverance and provision into your life every single what time. I want to remind us today, folks, that regardless of how bad things look around you right now, 
you can have the courage to trust God that he will make a way where there seems like there's no way. That he oftentimes will take us from, from where we're at to one of the you think most difficult places. God, why do you want me to start here? God, why do you want me to talk to this individual? Lord, why don't you send me over here to, to some, some easier ground to be able to work on? And he'll say, no, I want you to know that if you'll just trust in me, that I have a plan that you'll be able to overcome every situation in life. And you'll be able to be victorious if you'll just trust in me. Remember this, folks. I know I'm talking fast and throwing a lot at you, but I want you to get, in, get, get this stirred up on the inside of you. Past problems don't have to be tomorrow's prophecy. Past problems do not have to be tomorrow's prophecy. Just because you've maybe had struggles in the past in this area, maybe in the past you've been restricted, maybe even defeated, Maybe you've even been afraid to try. I want you to know that if you'll start to just pause and realize that God has given you a supernatural courage, an awareness of his presence with you, an awareness of his promises that he has given to you, as you start to meditate on those two spiritual truths, that your tomorrow will have victory in it because we'll be trusting the God who cannot be defeated. We can take courage in God. We can trust him. You can trust his word. You can trust the B-I-B-L-E. You can believe the Bible in your life. You can believe if God said it, he's promised it to us, that we can activate not just faith, but courage to move in that direction in our life. You know, the story goes that God had given them the promised land but they had to have the courage to invade the land to possess it. God actually had promised that land to them hundreds of years earlier through Abraham and had told them that if they would go in and wherever the soles of their feet would tread, that would God would give. But they had to have the courage step by step, battle by battle, victory by victory to follow after the Lord. And wherever they stopped is where... The, when they stopped having the courage to go forward or when they, they, uh, they, they were stopped seeing the possessions of God's provision in their life. So we've got to keep on pursuing after what God has called us to do, taking the courage to follow after him, having him lead us from one position to the next. Number two, courage to confront any opposition. We've said it over and over this morning already, but you have to be courageous to be able to confront opposition. Too often times, we want to try to avoid confrontation. Now I'm saying, I'm not telling us to walk around just trying to pick a fight with everybody. I'm not walking around trying to be a, a big bully or, or intimidating other people. I'm not even walking around looking for the devil to have a fight with him. I'm just saying that as we go forward to possess God's promises and do his will to advance the kingdom of God, to preach the gospel to the, to the world that is around us, to, to, to minister to those that are in need and hurting, whether it's natural or, or supernatural, emotional, whatever it might be, we've got to be willing to confront the opposition of the enemy around us. Too many Christians have stopped following Jesus in pursuit of comfortable Christianity. Too many Christians have fallen off to the side because they're looking for comfortable Christianity. There is no need for courage when we're pursuing comfort. It's one of the reasons why I really want us to stir it up today. There is an enemy out there, Satan. He hasn't changed. John 10.10 10 is still the same. Satan, he comes as a thief to steal, kill, and destroy. He is still there to try to hinder the gospel to oppress us as we proclaim the word. Even believing the word, Jesus says that when the word is sown into our life, that Satan comes immediately to steal away the word that is sown in our life. We have to be ready to confront him, and that's with courage on the inside of us. There is, there is a, a, a need in us to be ready to pursue even the enemy if he takes something from us, that we don't just surrender 
but that we actually have the courage to, oppress, uh, to, to confront him in our life. Are you courageous where it comes to dealing with opposition? Or are we looking for just the comfortable way, the quiet way, to just get by until Jesus comes? The third thing I would just really want to say this morning in this line of courage is we have to have the courage to continue. Turn to your neighbor, would you, and just tell him, just don't quit. Just, just don't quit. Just don't quit. Here, here it is, folks. We're going to go from battle to battle. But we get to go from victory to victory because the Lord is with us. We need to understand that as we pursue the will of God, the plan of God on this world, in this world, that it is going to be difficult. It is going to be oppressed. It is going to be, there's going to be obstacles put before us. But we must have the courage to continue to follow after the Lord in our life that every battle that you face just prepares you for the next victory in your life and that you won't give up and that you won't quit. You, we are not finished yet. And so we will not quit as we pursue the Lord in our life and his will. Now, pastor, are we ever going to get to Joshua chapter one? We are right now. Joshua chapter one is why I had to have your finger there so you can quickly get to Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter 1, we know the story here, and I encourage you to, uh, to read over Joshua chapter 1 later today, maybe, and just allow the Holy Spirit to refresh some of these things in your life. Am I, do I have the courage to trust God? Do I have the courage to confront the opposition that would come against me? Do I, I have the courage to continue to follow after the Lord? Am I continuing like I used to or like I want to on the inside? We know that Joshua is about ready to, to lead the people it's not because Joshua was some great charismatic leader. It was just, it was his appointed time to do what needed to be done. And he is getting ready to go into the promised land. And of course, we have the great city that is that's standing there and all of its defenses. And, and they know that the children of Israel are coming that direction. And they're ready for the battle. They're ready to stand against them. And Joshua goes and he is getting, getting prepared to be able to deal with what's coming in his way, and it is in Joshua chapter 1, and I want us, if I could, just real quickly re- jump down to, to verse 9, due to our time kind of got away with us here, but verse 9, and I want us to understand a, a, a truth here. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, where it says, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Man, what a a tremendous scripture that is given to us here. What a tremendous scripture that is revealed to us, not just of what God was going to do through Joshua, but he's the same God that is with us today. It is an example of us taking territory in this world that God has promised in, uh, in the word of God, promised to us in this day, but that we're going to have to deal with opposition along the way. The scripture says, I have not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. It seems in our natural, or excuse me, our English translation here, this word commanded, it seems to be more of a, a declaration, a, a, a you have to. It is a command that is given to him. It's almost a sense where you, Joshua, it's time for you to put your big boy britches on and get out there and get yourself motivated, do your, your pre-prep talk before you go out there. Yes, I can. I can do it. Yes, I can. Joshua can't do it. Nobody can. I mean, you know, he's, he's not talking about going in his tent and building himself up in that sense. It's interesting to note here that this is not a mandate that God was giving Joshua, but in the Hebrew, that word command is actually to appoint or to send with. He's telling Joshua this. When you go out, I am sending my courage with you. When you go out, when you go out, I have appointed my courage to go with you. I have blessed you with supernatural courage to be able to face an army and a situation that, and do it in a way that makes no sense whatsoever. I am giving you the courage 
to be able to go out there. And I want you to know today that God has invited every single one of us to be able to receive that blessing in our life of spiritual courage to go forward. He is not a life coach. He is not just positive thinking. He, it, it, he is not just a, a try better tomorrow. He is saying, I'm going with you, and when I go with you, my presence and my promises will come to pass if you'll just have the courage to get up and to be able to say, the Lord is with us, and, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No one will be able to stand against us. No plan of the enemy can overcome the God and his word that is present with us in our life. Joshua rose up from that moment. He did not go back and try to build up his faith. He did not go back and try to just encourage himself. He rose up from that moment and was ready to lead the people with an awareness of the presence of God. He needed the courage. Everyone needed that courage. He was not going to go out there. It wasn't a David and Goliath situation where he was just going to go out there and defeat the enemy, and because of his courage, everything worked out wonderful. The whole children of Israel followed after the word of the Lord, and remember, they carried the presence of God with them as they went forward. Church, I want you to have the courage to trust God. I want you in the days ahead to be so aware of God's presence and His Word that there is a spiritual courage that cloaks you. That you are quick to resist the enemy when he comes at you with thoughts and you would simply say, you know, I, God has not given me a spirit of fear. I am not afraid. I am not intimidated. I, I am going forward in the name of the Lord. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It's not something that we are trying to work up. It's something we are aware of. It's almost like we're wearing courage in our life. And with that courage that we understand that there will be battles ahead. When Jericho fell, that didn't solve everything. They had more battles ahead. Folks, I want you to know that there's battles ahead. But in every battle, the Lord is going to give us the courage to be victorious in our life. We've got a new mindset. We're no longer wandering around, just going from day to day. We're now going in, and we need it. This is the day, folks. This is the time that we, the church, need to be courageous to be able to take territory for the kingdom of God like never before. And that we're going to continue. We're not finished. We're not finished. We're not done. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you've moved into retirement. I don't care if you're at home even right now. Folks, I want you to know some of the greatest battles that we face with the adversary are right in our homes when we're alone and that we have to have the victory over those. But are you living the courageous Christian life or are you looking for the comfortable Christian life? Are you, are you sitting back and saying, man, I just wish we could just, just take it easy for a while. And that would be wonderful if we weren't confronted with the kingdom of darkness. You know, we don't get a chance to ring the bell and, 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 and everybody go to their corner. The, the enemy doesn't play fair. He's constantly nipping at our heels. He's constantly intimidating. He's constantly planning to take us out. But that's where we can have the courage that I'm going to continue to follow the Lord no matter what in my life and walk in the victory that he has for me. Why do we need to do that? Because others need to see it in you. God is glorified by your courageous acts, not by our comfortable acts. Why do we need to do it? Because that's who we are in Christ Jesus. That's the mission that we've been called to. It's the plan of God for our life. I hope today that you'll just take this and you'll meditate on it like I've been doing. And not just saying, God, give me courage, but say, God, thank you for the courage you've given me. Not just saying, God, I take the fears away, but to be able to say, God, thank you for the courage you've put in my life. I rebuke those fears. I resist those intimidations. The Lord is with me, and I will be victorious in Christ Jesus. 
there needs to be a declaration. A courageous person uh, spreads that courage to others that are around. Let's, let's, if we could use our words today, let's spread courage. Let's infect others with courage today. And in those in the body of Christ, we need to be stirred up with that divine courage in our life. Amen? And the more we're around people, the more we need to make them courageous in the Lord and stir that courage in their lives to do what needs to be done. There's more youth that need to be, set, need to be saved. There's, no people that, there's more people that need to be touched. There's more lives that need to be changed. And you're the ones that's going to do it in this day in Jesus' name. Amen? Stand with me if you would today. Heavenly Father, thank you for your divine nature, your presence in our lives. Thank you for the spirit of courage that's on this church. Thank you that we are courageous in the Lord, that there is no one too far, that we cannot reach them with the good news of Jesus Christ. There is no problem that is too great that you have not given us the answer to be able to touch their lives and impact them with the good news. And we thank you, Father, that you are encouraging us. Lord, you are, you are stirring that courage in us of what we can do in this day. And Lord, as, we're, as your church, as we go out, we thank you that we have the power of the Spirit of God moving in our lives to accomplish your will. And that we, Father God, we take more territory for the kingdom this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We 